Hey man, you're running. I'm not running. Yeah. Once I smoke a good amount, I get really focused. Oh yeah, Ooh. keep in with adrenaline, so it feels like. Have a good one now. You too, brother. Hey everyone, how are you doing? Today is my day, whoa. Today's the day to stop at the red light. <laughs> so I'm heading to a new place I've never been to before. It's called Mission Peak. So I've, I thought I would try something new. Um, I've told you before, I usually need to get out once a week. I think it's good for everybody to try to do that. Get out in nature if you can, if it's possible. Um, so I'm experimenting with new places. And also it's good for me to know uh, little hikes around the area for my family when uh, we go out on hiking trips. So I'll have some new ideas for them. I can test them and also to see which Places take dogs, because not all places take our little chicky. So I found this place on an app called All Trails. Have you heard of that? I'm not sure if it works worldwide. I, know, I definitely know it works in the United States. I just use it for the area I'm in. And some of the top places that people were hiking is Mission Peak, and that's where I'm going now. The only issue is it's rated as difficult to hike. So I think there's like easy, moderate, and difficult. So this is that difficult. So I have no idea what I'm getting into. <laughs> I hope it doesn't kill me. So anyways, um, I've never been here, so I thought I'd share it with you. So let's go on the journey. I get myself into. I gotta go to that peak up there at the tower. Whew. Well, let's see how difficult this is.
I'm headed way up there to that tower. I think I have to walk this way and I have no idea. If you make easy, it's easy. If you make difficult, it's difficult. So what if you don't make anything? The Bay Area. Smog. Freeway straight ahead. Everyone's coming and going. Where are you going? Hey, my friends. I need your help. Does a cow have Buddha nature? Thank you for your teaching. Oh man, you gotta be kidding me. All the way up there. Man, this is a killer. Almost there at the peak. Ah, then what? <laughs> Can't beat that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing this one again. That's for sure. Whoo, doggy. I smell like, I smell pot. I don't know who would be smoking up here. Oh, it's windy. We made it. Oh, 
what do you think of the view here? Pretty amazing, I'd have to say. Down, down, down we go. We have a Kongan in her tradition. Everybody has a shadow following them. How do you not step on the shadow? Hey everyone. Wow, that was probably the most difficult hike I've ever done. <laughs> I had, I didn't even know if I was gonna make it to the top. Now there was one point where there was vultures uh, flying in a circle above me, just waiting. <laughs> but I made it, and I'm not sure how I made it. Kind of uh, what I talked about in my book about don't know in action. Don't know if I can get to the top. Don't know if I'm gonna turn back around. And that's really how I made it to the top. You know, just pacing myself, listening to my body, my intuition, just stopping, breathing, listening, seeing, breathing, hearing, seeing, and just taking my time. It took me a little bit of, I think, an hour and a half to uh, get up there. And I noticed that people were going up the mountain in many different ways. Some people were running up the hill, the mountain. Some people were riding their bike. Some people were taking a few steps, resting, taking a few steps, resting. Some people were walking really slow, right? So it really doesn't matter how you do it. What's really important is just do it. But as I was getting closer to the top, I was asking myself, why do I need to get to the top anyways? Right? We're always trying to get to the top of something. Maybe it's a, a job or a relationship or some kind of status. And that really made me think about direction in Zen practice. When the Buddha realized his enlightenment, he didn't want to get up from the Bodhi tree. He was convinced by someone that he should teach. And he spent 49 years teaching the Dharma. In our practice, we call that direction. Why do it? So we have the practice itself, which is the tool to help us perceive the moment clearly. Then we have the direction. How do we use our practice in our lives from moment to moment to moment? So the man you saw uh, in the beginning of this video, he was actually at the very uh, top of the mountain when I arrived. And he noticed that I looked tired. And actually, I didn't realize how strenuous this hike would be. Um, I brought lots of water, but I didn't bring any food. And he looked at me and he said, would you like a granola bar? And I, would say, I said, yes, I would love a granola bar. It was really interesting, right? You know, many people were kind of absorbed in the view or some people were celebrating their success at getting to the top. But this man, very interesting man, he saw me very clearly and he responded. So that's what we call a direction. But there's many times that we lose our direction. We forget why we are practicing. Or maybe we're practicing, but we have no idea why. Um, I was recently having a conversation with somebody in the community who was talking about the, when sometimes when practice becomes pointless, right? It doesn't have any meaning. 
There's no direction. And I also have that experience often. And for me, when that happens, um, I think what's helpful for me is to look at the world, right? Open up the news. Look around in your city or in your community. There's a lot of suffering happening in this world. And for me, that's inspiration to practice, right? Because when I see these things, sometimes anger appears. Sometimes great sadness appears. Sometimes even fear appears. But that's just all energy. And that's all energy that we can use to fuel our practice to help us get back on the cushion and remind us of our direction, right? To understand our true self and use that to help others. But there may be other times where we don't even have the capability of doing that, that we're completely just lost and we don't know why we're doing it. It happens in our lives too, right? If we're not clear about what we're doing, we're not going to continue doing it. If you're in a bad relationship, you're not going to continue that relationship. Or if you have a job and you don't know why you're doing that job, most likely you're going to quit that job. Or maybe you're so absorbed in the job that it consumes your whole life, right? So if we're clear about why we do what we do, then we'll continue doing it. Life always has ups and downs, right? Sometimes we're feeling up, sometimes we're feeling down. And if our direction's not clear, we're just going to give up. But if our direction is clear, it's worth it. It's just not for me. If it's just for me, eventually we'll experience this dissatisfaction in our life. If it's for other people, then we experience love, compassion, and we get energy from that too, so we can use it to help others. So another thing we can do when we lose the point of practice or lose the direction of practice is turn to Sangha. Now these days, Sangha means the practicing community. So all of us right now, all of you watching this video, is a community of people who are practicing. And connecting with the community can help inspire us, right? Just imagine if you're on a freeway and you take the wrong exit. The Sangha can help you get back on the freeway again, right? So it can really bring the direction back into our practice. So that is why we practice together. That is why we have retreats. Zen Master Sung Song said, when you do retreats, you fill up your Dharma gasoline. I always thought that was very interesting, right? You get a lot of energy from practice, but it's not like it's special energy that you're tapping into. It's connecting to the energy that's all around us. So we practice with Sangha, we follow the schedule, right? We're just not following our own karma or our own habitual thinking. And that helps us tap into the energy that's already around us. So we get great energy from practicing with others and doing retreats. So therefore, we fill up our Dharma gasoline. Then we can use that gasoline in our lives to help others, which includes ourselves as well. So if you ever feel like your practice is have has no point or it doesn't have a direction, just reach out to the community. Do a retreat. All of this helps with our direction. And again, it's pretty simple. Understand your true self and how do we use that to help other people. Once we realize that life has ups and downs, we're not going to attach to it anymore, right? Once a, uh, a student came to a teacher and asked, I don't know what's wrong with my meditation. You know, I, I sit for 30 minutes and everything hurts a lot. My knees hurt, my back hurts, my brain hurts because of all this thinking. And the Zen master said, don't worry, it will pass. Well, three weeks later came, went by and the student went back to the master and said, I don't know what happened. I sit 30 minutes now and now my body doesn't hurt and my mind is crystal clear. And the master said, don't worry, it will pass. So that's just a part of our human condition. So what's really important is that we have a, a solid practice foundation. This is why I recommend a daily practice and doing it consistently at the same time. So we show up when we want to, we show up when we don't want to. And something about that, just showing up and doing it, can help our life. Sometimes we don't want to go to work, but we do it anyway. Sometimes we don't want to have that conversation with a loved one or friend, but we show up anyways and we do our best. We try our best in that moment. So having a daily practice really helps with this kind of mind that resists. So we have a very simple meditation instruction. 
Don't push away thinking and feeling. Don't hold on to it. Then we are free. Then we can tap into this energy that's around us already. And we tap into this love and compassion. And that's something that's going to help our lives and help those around us. So those are my thoughts for the day. Um, I'm going to eat some food because I'm still feeling a little weak. And I will see you soon.